Today I'm going to introduce you to a product called Bonacle Buster. I'm trying it out for the first time today uh, to clean the uh, heat exchanger in my entire raw water circuit. I bought the product at Defender in Connecticut for around 19 or 20 bucks a, a gallon. It's biodegradable. It seems to be pretty safe, non-toxic. I checked it out pretty good. Uh, compared it to a couple of the other ones, including Ridlime and CLR and some of the other ones, and, and I just seemed that, that this one seemed to be the best for, for my application. So I'm going to share that with you today. Um, some of the things you're going to want to have on hand first before you start. Um, well, the way I did it, I figured I'd change out my impeller at the same time. So, <clears throat> so you can see some of the tools that I have here. I'm going to go over with you real quick. First, the ever most important thing, the uh, impeller puller. you got to have that. I, I suggest it anyway. There's different ones you can buy, but this one here by Sea Dog is it's pretty reasonable. It's like 50 bucks. You can get it online, uh, Amazon, any one of those places has it, eBay. Uh, you got to have that. <clears throat> Um, of course, you obviously have to have the, <laughs> the ratchets and, you know, the miscellaneous wrenches and tools. You know, something good to cut hose with. I like this little, uh, little cheap, tiny uh, saw that I have here. Works pretty good, uh, just for cutting hose fast. Um, if you want to rip to it, you can use, uh, you know, the husky tool. But I like, I like this right here. It works pretty good. Of course, you want to have the correct replacement impeller. You know, I, use a, I chose a Jabsco. Easy to get at West Marine, they have that, all that stuff. Comes with a thing of lubricant, or you can also buy some uh, waterproof uh, lubricant at uh, any auto zone. What else we got here? Indian head shellac. And then, of course, you have to have the gasket material. Since if you can't buy the gaskets, like I can't get really buy them anymore, I don't, I don't want them anyway. You can just make them yourself. Auto zone carries this Carol pack, it's by Felpro. It's real thin, but it's it's tough stuff, and um, you just take out the old gasket, match it up. I just back traced it right on a you know piece of uh, piece of plastic and just cut it out. <clears throat> it was pretty easy to do, but you got to have that. That's something you definitely want to have. Then you have to have the pump, which you see down there, a little cheapy sump pump from Home Depot. <clears throat> you have to have the lines. I'm using a one and a quarter here. That's coming out of my oil cool. I'm using as my return because I'm I'm back flushing the system. I'm going backwards as opposed to the normal flow of the water on the raw water circuit simply to get a better flush. This is my income. It's going to my exhaust manifold. This is a one inch, and you see we'll follow this right up. And she goes right in to the exhaust manifold. <clears throat> I'm going to start the circuit here, coming down goes around, loops around through the heat exchanger, down through the seawater pump, back up around, through the inner cooler and engine oil cooler, out, you know, out the oil cooler, and it exits right down there, you can see. It's kind of hard to film and, and talk, but I'm trying to do the best I can with the pictures. Anyway, you have to remove the impeller first, and that's, I can't even show that to you because it's buried way down in the back. Uh, it's a pain in the neck to do, but you got to get in there, pull the impeller out. I made a, uh, I made another um, gasket out of this material that I use specifically for the flush because I don't want to put a, a good virgin gasket back in there. You know, it might have a little leftover acid on and after. And, you know, so you don't want you don't want that in your system. Um, I pull the impeller out, the old one right here. It's still in pretty good shape. I saved the case the other one came in, filled it with WD-40. I'm going to put that back in there, and I'm going to save that on board just in case I need it. I got a couple others from seasons past. Always good to have a spare impeller. But uh, not real difficult to do. You pull the impeller, reseal it, run your circuit, you know, cut your lines, connect everything up, get your cables, run it with water first, and check it. Um, I had a couple of leaks. I had, you know down by the impeller housing the first time I put the gasket on it didn't work too good so I had to recut another one put it back in there and, and uh, that, that seemed to work pretty good after that <clears throat> but uh, you know you set your circuit up run the water through check it if it's good 
empty the water out, dump the solution in, and man, you're good to go. And I can't tell you how filthy my heat exchange is. I can't, I can't even get over it. I'm very interested to see how how much of a difference it's going to make underwear. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to drop about 5 degrees, get it running down around, around 170, 175. It's running a little warm. Started to run a little warm at the end of last year. Of course, I didn't fish a whole lot, but you know, I want to get off to a good start this year. And of course, when you go back and you, you know, finish the job up, which I'm going to be doing in a few minutes, you got your new handy dandy impella. You got your lubricant. You got to put the lubricant in first. Get it good and lubricated. Set your gasket in. I use this Indian head shellac. I like it. I set that with all my gaskets. I've been doing it since the 70s. It works great. And um, when you set the impeller in, mine is keyed. Make sure you line up the keyway good. Um, I use something there it is right there up on top I use this little uh, fitting it's made of some real tough like ABS plastic and it fits really good on there as you can see and I get that keyway lined up after I get the fins going the right direction that's the other thing to make sure the fins are going the right direction check your impeller when you pull it out make sure you put the new ones in if it if you have to really squeeze it to get it in there you got to make sure the you know the veins are going the right way and uh, I use this little copper block right here, it's small, it fits in the tight area real good, and I just tap it gently, make sure you, you know, you, you go gentle, you can't whack this thing in like a Magilla Gorilla, you got to put it in gently, and you got to take your time, make sure everything's lined up good, when you get it all the way in, the you, you might have just a, a couple tenths, maybe a, uh, just a, you might have just a little bit of the top vein sticking up above, but that's, that seems to be okay because the the cover plate accommodates that. Make sure you get some lubricant on the cover plate too because that cover plate butts right up against, pretty much butts up against this thing and it has to has to run nice and smoothly against that. So, you know, that's something you want to make sure you have all that and uh, I think you're good to go. Um, when we get done, we're going to flush this thing out three times, four times with fresh water. We're going to put the impeller back in, button everything up. And we're going to fire it up. Um, well, the last thing you might want to also consider is, you know, an inline, uh, inline uh, cleaner like this. This right here is a SureFlow. You know, definitely have to have an inline strainer for sure. I, I chose this because it was relatively cheap and fast and easy to put in. I put the one on this side in my starboard motor. You'll see. There we go. Of course, you want to make sure you use two stainless clamps. Um, all your fittings and uh, you want to offset them as you can see when I offset just makes it easier neater that's it pretty simple job I'll uh, report the results when I get them Bonacle Buster this is the fishing vessel Godzilla out